All right, this morning's workout is our low impact and full body toning. And um, I've got my little Eric's pad. So grab your pillow, grab your Eric's pad, or grab nothing other than just your feet and get ready to up, up, down, down. I had so many things in my, going on in my mind already this morning. My goodness. Where to begin? Have you ever noticed that the more rushed you feel, the clumsier you are, <laughs> the bigger mess you create for yourself? Because in your haste, this happens to me in my haste, um, switch legs. I end up spilling things, dropping things, making bigger messes that by the end of whatever my task is that I was speedily going through, it's now taken me three times as long. That's happened three times this morning. And I don't even know, I wasn't, I don't even know how I got myself into feeling like I was rushed, but by the end of cleaning up three messes already this morning, I feel like I'm behind the eight ball. <laughs> so anyway, and not just little messes, right? So, you know, anywho, I want you to give me an alternating step touch up, okay? Up, up, down, switch legs. Up, up, down. This is, you want to complete a four step pattern, right? And then switch. And the reason why we're doing it this way, all right? is to get each leg showing its dominance, right? So you're transitioning your weight from side to side. I'm putting in a little bit of a quarter turn here, but you could keep yourself squared up and still do the same pattern. I like the quarter turn, right? It's dimensional. It gives you no um, how do you say, once you come off on this quarter turn fourth step, there's no question about which leg needs to go back up. And that's why I love the tap down, right? Sometimes people are so heavily footed that when they come down on the fourth step, they totally land that foot. And when both feet have the same amount of pressure on them, if you're not in a quarter turn stance, your brain has to figure out, huh, which leg, which turn, which legs turn is it? So that's why I like the quarter turn, not to mention it keeps things spicy. So now that you're hopefully in your quarter turn, we're gonna have this freedom, arms, big sweeping arms, right? Pull them up, turn yourself. If you need to be in slower motion, I'm gonna take myself off of my Erex pad and show you that without the extra cushion, the pattern is you're slightly stepping forward, to mimic as if you were stepping up on a pad, right? So if the pad is too much, too confusing, right? Give me four more. And as we go into this countdown, we're gonna take the rotation out, up, up, down, down, up, up, down, down. One more. And now release, relax. Let's just scooch our little cushion out of the way. <sighs> It's like a little bit of water makes a big mess. Not only that, a little bit of loose powder makes a big mess. <laughs> I have like powder everywhere in the bathroom. I was trying to like, I use so, this is like TMI, but Marlene, between you and I, like, I think you're used to me sharing a lot, high knees. <laughs> I use a lot of oil, specifically oil for face. There's a whole different kind of oil for body. And um, 
And so I literally slather myself up with oil and lotion, combination of the two, face and body. And then I look at myself and I'm like, huh, I'm really shiny. <laughs> so, so I decided that huh, I would just like, you know, put some powder on the shine. Um, and in my haste, I knocked my little container off the counter. <laughs> It's everywhere, except on my face. And now here we go, push, take those legs behind you. So can we move a few steps back? Oh yeah, move a few steps forward. And now for the brain teaser. When we come forward, I want you to pull your leg up to the front. When you go back, kick the leg behind you. Now, these two movements go forward. They're easy enough to do, right? Because when you're moving back, the leg is moving behind you. When you're coming forward, the leg is pulling up in front of you. But what happens when you get back this next time? We're gonna march it out just to let our brain relax. March it out. So now, that same movement we're gonna do again. But when we move forward, we're gonna be kicking our legs back behind us touching. And when we move back, we're gonna pull our legs up. Just trying to even get the words out of my mouth is complicated. So stop your legs, get back into your wide kick. And now think about this. When we move forward, the legs are gonna stay back behind us, right? Walk forward, walk forward. It should feel a little bit harder to do. Pull back, pull the knee up, pull it up, pull it up kick back so you're doing five repetitions one two three four pull it to the front touch the heel touch the heel or maybe you touch the knee right kick back five four if you don't have a lot of space to move forward and back then you're staying in place right but you're trying to get those knees do one more repetition one more all the way up a set is five reps pull back five, four, three, two, step touch side to side, double step touches, two, one and two, two, oh, lift the arms and breathe, release, relax, lift the arms and breathe, release, relax. Now keep your double touch pattern because that's four steps. Stay here if this is like, okay, I don't have a whole lot of space. Everything feels good. I feel coordinated when I'm doing double step touch, but as soon as I go to grapevine step, it feels weird. If you can grapevine, it's the same number of steps. You just step, cross back, open it up, close. Step, cross back, open it up, close. This is one of the funniest moves that when I give it in class, all right, I see a lot of interpretation of this move and we've slowed it down for a reason. Somehow, when you step for the cross back, that tends to be a limiting factor for a lot of people. And so in class, what I'll see is a walk across, right? And you're like, well, what's the difference? It's still the same number of steps, but try, we're gonna do, this is what I love, the beauty of both movements. Are you ready? When we go back to this side, stop, wipe the slate, step cross across the front, open it up, close it, go the other direction, walk across the front, open it up, close it. Now do your basic grapevine, which is a step behind, step behind, open and close. You'd see where we're going with this, pause, you're like, not yet. One repetition to each side crosses the front, one repetition to each side across the back, go across the front, step front, right? Again, step front. Now go for the back. That's your basic grapevine, basic grapevine. And now do the walk across the front, 
right? Walk across the front. I'm flub that up. Sorry. <laughs> I know when I flub it up, I can still get back on beat. But if you're looking at my feet, you're like, what did she do? Step, walk across the front. See, my body is so used to doing the basic grapevine that when I go to walk across the front, it doesn't feel right to me. <laughs> so here we go. Walk across the front. One more time. Grapevine. Are you still with me? Grapevine. And now basic step touch. There's a thing that happens when you're in a room full of people teaching a class and it's called the timing delivery of instruction. <laughs> and so as an instructor, TikTok, you have to give enough lead time with your instruction for someone to process the change of pattern, right? So that you stay in this rhythm of not everybody always feeling like they're out of step because you shorted them the process time. So in this version of teaching, I do realize sometimes I short you and I change the pattern too quickly. Here we go. Now, take the legs even lower, ah, clean up your form so that you have less of this. Put yourself into this frame, all right? And the frame, I'm gonna turn to the side to show you the emphasis. The frame not only runs down the sides of you, the frame is also front and back. Because often when I watch people do these little side ticks, their body kind of, when the leg lifts, their body kips forward. So you wanna imagine that you're in a fairly tight, parameter here. And the leg doesn't have to sweep wide. As a matter of fact, dial your focus down on my feet. Look how forward and slightly turned in my feet are, but yet they're hip width apart. Do that with yours. Now, pull yourself into pelvic tilt, which automatically, as soon as you engage pelvic tilt, your leg sweep will tighten up a little bit. So we don't want to kick oh, massive amount of focus is happening. It's called your hip abductors, right? So we don't have to do a lot. We don't have to add extra weight. We just have to be slab tight from front to back and controlled from side to side. You've got about five more, slow it down. Now, if you will allow the leg, right, to load for a nanosecond, you're in a balanced hold position, which intensifies the workload. And three, and two, and cut, walk it out. You might not have even been able to do all of those successfully. Hmm. Marlene, you did miss a story yesterday, and the story was this. <laughs> I sub-instructed a class on Friday. And so you're now into your little rock step, okay? So in the past, my sub-instructing, I've had a freedom to do the type of class that I normally do. But this time specifically, the instruction was to teach a boot camp style class, which means higher intensity. I don't have a problem with that. The problem I have with teaching a class like that is not my ability to teach the class. <laughs> it's the ability of the participants to actually do the movements correctly through the whole parameter of the time block. Okay, having said that, marching feet. So there was a movement that I gave that wasn't part of the timed exercise. It was part of the time spent where we were in a group doing the same thing together instead of people being at stations, switch leg rock step. And it was a Pilates based part of our roll up series, rolling like a ball. And every time I do this movement, I'm so dialed in on the execution that I nail it. I nail the execution so significantly that it Charlie horses my abdominal wall up. Anyway, I was so sore from that marching feet <laughs> that Saturday, Sunday, and yesterday, 
every time like I it it, it got uh, subsequently less intense as the day you know Saturday was really intense Sunday was less but I could still tell that I had done something high knees and then yesterday it was just a little bit of a minor sensation but because there's a comedian that Rich and I like that talks about his um experience with his trainer he gets to a point in his skit relax your legs where he says in a southern drawl I hurt my fat <laughs> anyway grab a quick drink so Saturday Sunday and Monday every time I would go to move and I would feel my abs I would say to Rich I hurt my fat today I feel pretty good so today Today, when we get to the floor, we're going to repeat that exercise, right? Because I feel like if my body's responding that way, it means I'm not doing it often enough. <gasps> anyway, I hope that you don't have the same sensation that I have had with it. Grab your chair. But now you should be eagerly looking forward to a movement that hurts my fat every time I do it. I mean, I was actually scared. <laughs> I was in so much discomfort that had it happened to anybody else, they would have felt like they needed to go to the doctor. <laughs> so, okay. If I had my phone, I would really be on the money with this one. I want you to, this is a little test. And because I don't have a stopwatch, it's gonna be more like feels like time. I want you to offset your feet a little bit. And not only are they offset front to back, they're about hip width apart, okay? This is our sit to stand test. Ooh, the goal is hand across the chest, stand up, sit down. Now, we've already started the test. You might not be working at the same speed I am, but your goal is to not move your feet your goal is to not to have to use your hands because this is a test. And I would say we're about halfway through the test. And you're like, but you forgot to count. You're exactly right, because it's very hard for me to count and talk. <laughs> so you got probably, I don't know, I'd say seven more seconds. It feels like 30 seconds, right? A couple more. Now, make this your last one. Release and relax. Kind of jog the feet. That is a basic test given to deter. It is used to determine lower body strength, believe it or not. And then there is a how to interpret the test based on age, how many repetitions should you have been able to do or it's like less about should in the span of 30 seconds how many repetitions did you do and then you cross reference that with a chart that tells you whether or not you're highly functioning or you need to work on your lower body strength you're you're still doing it we got Cinco de Mayo coming up, right? Let's get into it. Immediately, my, my thoughts and my brain start going to the like the mariachi uh, music. So move your feet. This is a this is a position where the load is so minimal, right? But yet, if you're keeping your spine erect, your abs are engaged, your heart rate should be coming up, even though it's like, it seems too easy. And relax. Now, I want you to offset your feet the other direction, right? Hip width apart. You'll know if your feet are too far apart because the back foot needs to be heel loaded. So let that be the guide. If your back foot is heel off the floor, it's in the wrong spot. Put it heel down, crisscross arms, stretch the spine, pull the navel in. You're doing another test. Up, one, two, 
three, maybe you're not able to move as quick. Four, it doesn't matter. You keep your own count. Five, <laughs> and let's shoot for 12, six, seven. I need to review the actual breakdown table of what number should we be focusing on, right? Push. You might be finding it hard to keep the speed. Do your very best. You got, I don't know, we'll say five more seconds. Pull. And in five seconds, you should maybe get like two reps. Stay standing. Up. Woo. All right. Using the chair, we're going to work the hips, buns, hips and buns. So when I think hips, I think outer, so hips and buns, two movements with the use of our chair as our stabilizer, or I should say our assist prop. Now, this is, instead of getting onto our hands and knees doing fire hydrants, all right, we're in a hip, hip hinge fire hydrant. So think there's a lot of pressure on the hands that way, right? Maybe you need to go to knuckles down, get the shoulders out of the ears. And so what angle should your leg be taking? See how my stance leg is actually not even in the screen, but yet if I push this leg out of the way, it's in the screen. You're trying to get your lifting leg and your stance leg to mirror one another. So as you raise your working leg, if it tracks back, you're not at the right angle. Draw it down, look down. That leg should be going laterally straight out to the side. We're not ready to push it back. And now the beauty of being in stance position versus kneeling position is that your standing leg rump should be fired up. So let's do five more of these. Five, four, oh, three, two, release, relax, walk it out. Maybe you need to relax those little hands a little bit. Okay, back to position, leg number two. If being on your hands is too much, you could actually use the higher pour of your chair and you would do, you would just bring your body line up. Your now, I don't, I don't want you to unless you have to. I'm giving you options. But again, I'm moving my working leg around so that you can see something if you're looking at the screen. If you can see this moving leg in the screen, that tells you that it's tracking wrong. I want my thigh to be mirroring the angle of my stance leg. And so you may have to keep a watchful eye on that leg. And now that I'm already committed to this many repetitions in standing position, I'm going to stay here instead of drawing down. But this is an alternative to staying off of the wrists, right? And let's do about five more. Five, four. In this position, I'm in what's called athletic ready. That just means my spine is rigid, but yet angled. Three, two, and relax, move your chair. So let's revisit athle athletic ready position. In the past, I've dissected down why athletic ready is this term that we should be able to identify body positioning with. Straight up stance is not athletic ready. But if you put yourself into a squat stance, you're actually ready for a whole slew of change and range of motion positions that your body can get into active ready, readily available. So assume your squat. And now all I want you to do is like march your feet. But as you march your feet, you're not going to let anything about your body position change. So in your marching feet, don't come up, stay hips down like you're focused. Okay, you're focused. Even if you're looking down, looking at your feet, maybe your feet aren't able to get totally off the floor, but you can take your heels and you can pop them up and down, right? So now if you can go a little faster and now I want you to move forward, move back. 
Move to the side. When you move to the side, you have to be able to maintain your body alignment. Come back to the center. You're going to come forward, come forward, come forward. Shoulders are out of the ears. Back it up. Take it to the side. Don't let the legs close in. Keep the legs hip width apart. Move to the other side. Forward. Back. Stop. That should have elevated your heart rate a little bit. Grab a drink. There is one additional story that you missed, Marlene, so I'll just catch you up. <laughs> I bought the wrong apple cider vinegar. I won't make that mistake again. Inadvertently, I bought the apple cider vinegar that had already mixed in with it honey and uh, cayenne pepper, which it's just too sweet for me. So I think I need to tone it down a little bit with some lemon. <laughs> but because I use a whole lemon, can you grab your twisty board? I think you have one. And for those of you who may be uh, watching at a later date, if you don't have a twisty board, then what works really good, if you have a surface ceramic tile or smooth floor, right? If you have a rug, then you just put your feet on the rug and you try to twist balls of feet loaded, right? But if you're on a smooth floor, then you put some rags down because you want to feel your weight, push the rag or the beauty of your core board, draw those legs together, squish the knees together tight, lower your center of gravity, get your shoulders out of your ears, push, pull, push, pull, push, pull. Now you can go really slow. If twisting is a new move for your body, then you might have to figure out how do you coordinate your arms in the direction that the hips are twisting to help give you some momentum. Push, push, push. Here we go, faster. I'm sweating. Push, 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 push. All right, you got about, I don't know. How about we say we go for a long 10 seconds here. If you catch yourself, dominant where you like you started in a particular angle and now your body is rotated a quarter turn then part of you isn't doing its workload so try to focus on a direction and keep your body righted so that you stay in that direction drop the shoulders out of the ears five more good twist four three two and cut release relax I'm fascinated, as you all know, with the tests of the aura ring and this, uh, you're grabbing lightweight. So we're gonna get into some shoulders, shoulders and triceps, all right? So I'm gonna stick with my universal twos. I still, though I use this, um, these testing strips, V-I-V-O-O, V-V-O, Vivio. I've not heard it pronounced. I've not seen it phonetically spelled out, like, you know, sounded out. And so I keep um, probably butchering the name of this um, product. But last night I was reviewing lateral raises. So we're going to call these around the world. So palm to palm, come up thumb to thumb, and now hold the up and stay looking at the screen for a second because I want to show you something. Your arms, one of the few times where I'm not going to suggest you get your arms in line with your ears. For this one, your arms are actually high, but they're forward of your face. And yet if they're too low, way out here, it's very stressful on the shoulders. So there is, I hope you'll find this, it's called the sweet spot, where they're almost over your head, 
but they're still in your peripheral vision line. So think about that. The arms come up. You're not going to tip your eyes up to see, but if you, if you try to see above, can you spot your arm without tipping your head up? I may have put too much restriction on there, but if you feel tension in your shoulder, it's probably because you're not getting at a high enough angle. And then if you're too high, it's a bad angle as well. So that's why each movement has a sweet spot. You have to find it. The sweet spot identifies as the angle where the muscles function without joint strain at the end range, right? Sweet spot, where is it? That doesn't mean it's gonna be easy. That just means that you're like, okay, I feel the muscles working. They're not straining because you're using light enough weight, but it should feel good, sweet. Good, right? Five more. So going through my aura ring data, quarterly, release and relax. Quarterly aura sends you, it's called your seasonal report. <laughs> so that just came in yesterday. And so I then went to the category of reports. And I've been wearing the aura ring, hold the arms open, lift the elbows, oh, lower the elbows, close the hand position. Wow. Okay. You ready? As if you're holding on to a giant rubber band. So take your elbows, pull your elbows in towards your side body. Now pull the hands apart from each other. And from there, lift the elbows and the forearm and the hand together without making your neck disappear. So you've got to get your shoulders anchored and the elbow is tracking in line with the shoulder. And what I mean by that, it's not pulled back and it's not in front of you. The elbow is sitting laterally away from the shoulder joint. Lower the insides of the elbows like you're pressing the inside of your elbow against a sensor and then close the hands. Pull the hands because you remember you're doing a giant rubber band, stretching the giant rubber band. And if you think about pulling a giant rubber band open, it will get you a pulled and retracted scapulas. <sighs> Ready? Okay, you're here. Lift the elbows. Lower the elbows, close the hands, open the hands, elbows up, elbows down, close, open, up, down, close, open. So two more. My seasonal or report, I was like, I'm able to go back to 2019, release and relax. I have four years of data. You're done with your twos. It is time to get the heart rate up again. Jogging feet. If your body's feeling like you wanna keep participating, but you wanna conserve some of your energy so that you can get the full duration of class, then sit back in your chair. Don't do this unless you feel like you need to. Sit back in your chair and just get your feet and arms going and give yourself, I call it active rest, right? This is a little less strenuous than if you're standing up trying to do a prance jog. And so the thing that I was checking over the four years, it's like cross-referencing, is the aura ring charts so much. But I was like, I wonder how my sleep has actually, what, what is a, because it's more than just wearing the gadget, okay? Wearing the gadget is supposed to help you have a mindfulness about certain components of lifestyle patterns. 
the lifestyle pattern for me that I have put so much focus on is sleep quality. So I was pleasantly surprised to find this. In four years, <laughs> I've managed to increase my sleep time by an hour. <laughs> now, it's like, why is that such a big deal? Double step touch, double step touch, okay? Because it's not just that, oh, yippee, it took me four years to get myself sleeping an extra hour. It's the efficiency, it's called latency, it's called resting heart rate, it's called um, body temperature, it's called respiratory rate, like within the sleep category, there is REM sleep, deep sleep, light sleep, right? And then from there, there's the breakdown of all of these other components. Remember what we did, grapevines? You're like, oh no, not that again. Walk across the front, walk across the front, grapevine, grapevine, walk across the front, open cross, step and close, open, grapevine, <laughs> grapevine, because <laughs> both of them are not grapevines. Only one of them's a grapevine and the other one's a walk across, grapevine. <laughs> Marching feet. Now, the next move, I'm just trying to get, keep your heart rate up for a few more minutes. Giant knee lifts, okay? And I want you to take your legs and now kick them back behind you and move forward. That's two and three and four. Pull the knees to the front, touch the foot for five, four. Move back, three, two, do it again. Kick the leg back, move forward. And two and three and four, pull it up, pull it up, pull it up. Marching feet, rock step. Okay, so we're in rock step. And I want you to do alternating foot rock step. Oh, march in the middle. Rock, march, 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 rock, march, march, march. You're like, you tricked me. We didn't do this one. You're right, we didn't. But I like to think that you are highly adaptable. Given the right instruction, you can modify. <laughs> Give me two more. Push. Last one. Push. Release and relax. You're doing one last set of your sit to stands. So I was pretty happy with the fact that, listen, there's a slew of things that are on my radar. And one of them is with the amount of travel time that I have, I'm gonna talk and we're gonna go through this set and we're gonna just knock out, I don't even wanna count. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna just keep us going, okay? I'm gonna go to what feels like 30 seconds. What I've tried to do over the extended period of time with as much traveling as I do, is try to find a way to maintain a, a lifestyle parameter. So whether I'm home or away, I'm doing the majority of what my body needs me to do right, whether I'm home or away. And you know that um, I feel like I'm nailing it because in the course, you've got about five more. In the course of these four years, with my travel increasing, this is your last one, sit, jogging feet. In the course of this time away, so much social time is built into it. And with social time comes, I call it my, my truths. I have to, I have to fight truly for myself. Not that anybody is holding a gun to my head, but social pressure of going out, eating late, consuming too much of all the wrong things, right? These are things that derail people's progress. And in this span of time, faster, 
I've managed to maintain healthy body fat, lose body fat and weight, and improve my health parameters all while I'm doing, it's like a social experiment, right? Release and relax. And these are the things that I feel are my strengths, right? And I don't, I broadcast them to you, but you know, when I'm posting on social media, it's hard to, uh, you're getting your mat, okay? It's hard to put a, a selling component to lifestyle, right? Like, you know, the class designation, right? Like Rich, is, Rich has um, spent a lot of time thinking about, gosh, what is it, Michelle? Like, what, what makes you marketable? What's your, what's the catch? What category can we put you in to make you marketable? And fortunately, it's not that I don't care about my marketability. It's the fact that it's so hard to classify what it is, my knowledge, right? Because it's my knowledge that's valuable. And because I don't have the bells and whistles and I'm not promoting some, you know, weight loss thing, this get fit, trim, bicep, slender, fast program, it lacks the bells and whistles to be captivating and interesting to most people. So fortunately, your sideline, fortunately, I'm captivated and interested enough for my own self, my own running my experiment for myself, that it keeps me motivated to do, to do what it is that I do and present all the information that I bring you guys. Okay, you ready? It's just your little leg. Tell yourself that. It's just your little leg. Your side lying. The bottom leg is pulled up so it's perpendicular to your body. And then the top leg is kind of mirroring and you're just holding. And as you hold the leg up, I want you to draw your attention to your knee. Take the soft knee and activate it. Take the what might be a lazy ankle and flex it. Now, pull your, it's called pelvic floor. So I want you to take the pelvic floor muscles and I want you to squeeze them into your body. Oof. Isn't that amazing? Just bring in your awareness, static hold, active quad, active ankle, pulling not only the belly in, but trying to take the pelvic floor muscles and make them go. And then relax. Whew. Now, push yourself up. We'll get to the other side in a moment. If sitting like this, we'll do a few like this. So if you can do this, do it knowing that you're only going to do a few, but if you can't stay in this position, then your body's going to look more like this. And then what's going to happen is when we twist our shoulders towards the floor, this back leg needs to twist in with you. Like the whole body has to twist because you'll be doing a modified push-up and then open yourself back up. So since I've already gotten myself straight legged, but at an angle, I'm gonna do the first four like this and then I'll go back to the bent leg. Lift the chest, twist the body towards your mat, let the hips and legs roll so that you can bend into the floor, push up. And what I'm loving right here, when we get our body to the floor, if you'll pause, the rump on the bottom leg should feel like it's getting a stretch, push. This underside of this leg when you're close to the floor should feel like, wow, that's oddly stretching. And now push up, go ahead. You either stay like that or you fold the legs. Four more, twist into it. Don't make the mistake of taking the arms way away from you. They stay pretty close to the hip line, right? 
push. And you'll know if they're too close because you feel like you can't bend your arm. So that term, sweet spot, there is a sweet spot where you feel like you can get down and up without strain. And now push up, release, swivel the legs, move your towel. You're going to leg number two, isometric holding of the hips. I'm not a flashy person. I like to think like <laughs> I'm subdued, right? I do kind of like to blend in to the woodwork. So um, oddly enough, I don't like attention. And yet I'm in a profession where the spotlight's on me while I'm doing this great thing that I get to do with you all. And I will just say that my confidence comes from the fact of me knowing my methods are so tested tr and true for me that that's where my confidence comes in being able to present again and again and again thought starters. I've got supporting data that supports my methods, right? And I have a physicality about myself where I'm not just shooting in the dark going, well, this might work. I know it works, right? And yet that's so hard to bottle and sell. <laughs> so where are you? I want you to take your leg that may be going, oh man, heavy leg, okay? But stay with it, push it to straight. Flex the foot. Now pull the belly in and try to clench your glutes. You're just holding. It's just your little leg. Yep. Maybe you take your free hand and you're like trying to coax the leg and go, okay, I know she's only going to make us hold it for a few more seconds. Rub the leg. Go, you can do it. Leg five, four, three, two, release. Whew isometric loading has a great value to you, All right? Let's start with the legs open. So unfold the front leg, take the back leg. You're kind of in a V sit, but you're gonna rotate your body towards your mat. And in order to do that, you've got to roll that trailing leg internally. And now find the floor, bend into it, as soon as you start coming down, can you feel that hip that's got the weight? Does it feel like a stretch? Mine does. Push. And in the off chance that your shoulders don't like the coming down part, can I suggest to you that it might be because you're rounding your back instead of squeezing everything down. If you come down trying to lower the chest and the belly to the floor, that will change how your body tracks. And maybe you just get here and you just have to brace because you can't do the lowering. This is still pretty fabulous. Come out of it again. Let me draw your attention to the wrist, your, tra your trailing wrist should be feeling like it's getting taxed a little bit. That's not uncommon. That's your four. Bend your legs if you can, and let's do four more. Twist your body. Lengthen the spine and bring the chest to the floor. Ah, push, twist away, twist into it, down. Two of four. I've been building this, right? We are kind of working ourselves through all ranges of motion so that as we're out of this, we're going to do our rolling like a ball. And this is the one that may leave a real lasting impression on your body. <laughs> And as I was telling my sister and my mom the story, I did say, you know, most people do it wrong, not intentionally. It just takes a whole bunch of control to execute to the degree that I get it. And, um, and I do consider myself really strong. So the funny thing is that when I'm really, really sore from something, it 
it scares me to think how sore someone else could get from it. Okay. So my intention in giving you this is not to make you sore. It's a very good movement that should be in our program with consistency. So here's where we are. We're starting with our basic rolling like a ball. C curve, try to pull your legs to you and then you let out your arm bend and the feet get to come off the floor. Down you go, control it, tuck your chin, look at your belly, down you go. And now we're supposed to be able to roll ourselves back up. That's one. If you keep your back straight and you go back and you go thud, okay? That's because you are not in C curve. You want to practice C curve to S curve. We're doing this for a reason. And now tuck the chin and chest, scoop out, raise the feet, the arms, back you go. If you get here and you can't roll up, roll to the side and start again, because sooner or later, your parts will get mobile enough for you to do this. And what if you're like, oh, I just not going to do that one. That's your prerogative. Roll back, roll up. Now, the tricky part of this is that there are multiple actions. Sit up, pull the feet off the floor. That's the first action. Can you balance in S curve and then go tuck the chin, scoop out the middle, stay rounded so that only the low back touches up and then up. Sit up. And as soon as you pull yourself up, your feet might smack the floor. Use that to your advantage. Sit up to S and then barely get the feet off the floor. Ready? Float to C curve, chin to chest, chin to chest, low back touches. If your head hit the floor, you've gone too far. Pull up, feet touch, pull to S, shimmy yourself up to S, and then pull the heels, lift the heels, and glide the toes back until you don't need them on the floor. You're in S and now you're in C. We haven't even done the move that makes me sore. So this is where you stay. I want you to relax for a second. And now I'm gonna show you. If that was executable for you and you're like, I would like to work a little bit harder, then what you're gonna do is you're gonna grab your heel. Zzz. You're like, oh no. And everything that we just did, you do it holding your feet. This won't be for everybody. Ready? So S curve. And with me holding my heels, I'm going to let my hands and my heels touch the floor for a moment so that I can clean up my S and then the heels come off the floor. And now I'm balanced. And if you want to go to your version, then you do your version. I'm going to float back to C curve, chin to chest, rock, roll. Here's the hard part is getting back up to balance. I go slow enough, slow enough, slow enough, slow enough. So as my weight is settling into the tailbone, I'm trying to pull my chest up. Here we go. Tuck the chin round the spine, roll back, keep your feet as close to the floor as you can, pull up, <laughs> do one more. I'm balanced here for an extra amount of time because I feel like I need to go a little bit more into my forward position. Last one, rock back, keep your feet as close to the floor as you can. Up and now that I think is just a great abilities testing. It's not for everybody. It's not for everybody because a lot of people 
their spines are so tight that they can't articulate the vertebrae to actually get a smooth roll. That is not, in my opinion, um, I, I don't want to use the word excuse, but in my opinion, if you have a hard time getting your spine to work in segments and you don't have fused um, discs, right? That's a whole different thing. If you've had fusions, then of course your vertebrae are not going to function that fluid. But if that's not your issue and it's just because your body is really stiff, there's no reason to not practice that, right? So here we go. From rolling like a ball to cobra pressaways, shoulders are out of the ears, wiggle the hips so that you can feel your feet separate to at least hip width apart. I'm right in the middle of my mat and I'm taking my hand as wide as my mat will let me into full cobra. Oh, massive amount of stretch. Keep the tops of your feet pressing into the floor and your dairy air tight. And then you're gonna let the hands just walk forward to take all the pressure off your body, keeping the hands wide. Now, squeeze your buns, lift the chest, but look down at the mat, raise the arms, Pull the arms around, right? And then you're going to turn the palms up, work them behind your hips, and then bring your hands to interlaced position and then lengthen the arms. Wow. Release the hands, stretch the arms forward, relax your body, forehead to the mat. Now, all you have to do is slide the hands back and then load the hands to push yourself up back to Cobra. <sighs> Squeezing buns, bring the chest down, slide the arms forward, pick up the arms, lift the chest. You're staring at your mat. You're working your arms all the way around. Turn the palms up, work the hands behind your buns, and then interlace your fingers. And then keeping your palms pressing, like turned in towards each other, then you try to fully extend your arms. Release the arms. Stretch the arms forward, relax, forehead to the floor. <sighs> Pull the hands back about halfway so that you feel like your elbows are pointed up to the ceiling. And then start squeezing your buns. Press your body up to cobra. Ah, oh. ready? Come down. Arms reach forward, pick them up. You're looking at the mat. Sweep the arms back around you, interlacing the fingers, pulling your arms to full extension and peeling your chest off the floor. Release the arms, push yourself up. You're getting up. Stub the toes into the floor. Downward dog. Oh, it's really important that we don't lose the strength in our upper body to get into downward dog. If you've already walked yourself up, get yourself back to downward dog if you can, because I want you to rock your weight. I'm going to move on to my mat so my feet don't slip. I want you to rock your weight, heel, toe, heel, toe, get those little calves stretched out. Five, four three, two, and now separate your feet nice and far, bend your legs, walk yourself back. It takes a lot to get heel loaded. That's what you want to do. Push your hips back so that your feet are flat and then help yourself up. Whew. Lift and breathe. Release, relax. You have successfully completed this portion of your day. Hmm.